This episode is brought to you by Nespresso. Satisfy your iced coffee craving without leaving home with custom blends. From double espressos to cold brew style. Meant to be iced, meant to be simple, and consistently delicious with a touch of a button. Visit Nespresso.com to learn more. This episode is brought to you by Disney+. Plus. With Hulu on Disney+, Plus, your favorites are now together. On Disney+, Plus, uncover a crime spree that pits a Jedi Master against a warrior from his past in Star Wars The Acolyte, now streaming. And on Hulu, catch the drama about an NBA owner's controversial remarks and FX's clipped, now streaming. Available with a Disney Bundle subscription. Terms apply. Visit DisneyPlus.com slash Hulu for details. The Fantasy Footballers DFS and Betting Podcast with your hosts, Kyle Borgannoni and Matthew Betts. Welcome in, boys and girls. We're back. Another edition of the Fantasy Footballers DFS and Betting Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Borgannoni, and I am joined, as always, by Matthew. Let's brawl in best ball bets. You know, normally, Kyle, I would consider you one of my one of my best friends. But today, yeah. I hate your guts, dude. I want to take your lunch money. I want to bully you in the lobby, as you like to say. Um, we're not friends for the next hour, Kyle. We're drafting mano e mano with our, our Discord crew. The joke's on you because I ate an early lunch today. So there will be no lunch money taken from me. I have been preparing for this live draft. Yes, on this show, we will get to walk through... An underdog live draft where Bets and I are against each other. There's some people in Discord right now. I'm looking at our best ball channel, and people are just begging me. Please, just just please post the link, Kyle. And uh, I kind of like the control. <laughs> I like the power. You've got all the power. You're the commissioner. You know, you get the little crown uh, on, on underdog, which is where we're drafting today, that says you got the power to let people know when to, when to enter. Um, yeah, you're, you're smiling. You like this. I really appreciate someone in Discord. I forget the name. I have to find it, but they mentioned that you know getting into this draft is so exclusive. This is like trying to buy Taylor Swift tickets when they go on sale, like in the first minute or two, to try to enter <laughs> this draft. So obviously, this is very exclusive. The can't miss event of the year of the summer. Um, so I'm excited, man. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So we're gonna walk through this and talk through our picks. Uh, tell you where we got sniped. We will post the draft board later, but. Just a reminder, our best ball channel is really the best place for you to talk strategy. We get to pop in there, give some different thoughts, uh, some updated data, and really you get to talk through your exposure rates. Like that's one of my favorite things that I see is people saying, hey, you know, I'm kind of heavy on this player. What do you think? Um, I saw some people talking about Isaiah Likely. Like, I feel like he's one of the guys that we're okay with if you're like a little over exposed to him because we've seen the upside so you can talk all that out if you want to be a part of that ballers discord if you want to get our best ball rankings i mean everybody here is just like please kyle post the link we'll get to it uh but yeah ultimatedraftkit.com if you want those you and i just updated some of our exposures in the best ball primer so make sure that you're looking through this from a team by team perspective right playing best ball and just having player takes is one way to do this but for us, we're looking at teams and, and good offenses and pace metrics. So a team-by-team -team approach is what we care about, and we will continue to put out some more content, some more things. But also, last little, little bit, last week, your girls had their birthday. My son, Houston, had his birthday. But today, when we're recording, it's, <laughs> it's True Daddy's birthday, Truman, my, my five-year-old. So we're living large. Dude, Truman's the man. Shout out to Truman. Um, I do have to apologize, you know, peek behind the curtain. I didn't even realize it was Truman's birthday. So terrible friend I am. But Kyle was like, hey, man, can we record in the morning? Like, you know, so I can have my afternoon. And I was like, dude, that's not good for me. You know, if we could record when we normally do, that'd be preferred. But now I feel terrible. Like I literally ruined Truman's, Truman's birthday because Kyle can't be with his kid. And I'm also going to steal his dad's money, which means Truman, I'm sorry if your, your birthday present this year isn't uh, isn't great. Sorry, son. You couldn't get anything because... Uh... I was stuck in a best ball draft with a bunch of people in the middle of June. That, <laughs> Dad that, of the year, baby. Sorry I, ruined, <laughs> sorry I ruined your birthday party. Uh, one of the things he did want, and he is getting, is a uh, Power Rangers Megazord. 
Oh, that you can put it all together, like the, like the OG one too. So I'm pretty excited. I don't know if that's just me excited about it, but uh, uh, he'll get to do that. So uh, let's get into some best ball. Best ball bonanza. I just posted the link for the people in our best ball channel. They'll get to jump in and it is filling. It'll fill way too quick. And there's going to be people that are going to be very mad at me, but we will find out in just a second. This is a 12 person uh, on underdog. It looks like, oh man, great. Bets and I are back to back. Oh, dang so it. There's a, there's a lot of strategy stuff that I think will go out the window very quickly. Um, but I also get to kind of think about where you're going and whatnot. But we, we do get to realize that with the board, whoever you like, they're not coming back to you. Mark Andrews is not coming back to you. Uh, there, so I've already really, accepted. There's a 0% chance I'm getting Mark Andrews in this draft. Well, that's so, fine. That'll they, bring my exposure down from 40% to 39%. It is what it is. That's totally fine. Um, we will get to comment on certain teams and the way that people are building in this draft, but I am at the seven spot. Betts is at the six spot. Uh, we have a couple other lovely people from our Discord, including two of our mods made it in, so that's great. Uh, but I was participating in some drafts earlier today, and I, I, I just keep forgetting how sharp the field gets over time. Like The way that I was drafting a month ago, it's like, oh, I got a value on this player didn't work out so well. So I will walk us through the picks. It's a fast draft. So uh, if we did a slow draft, you and I would be here for, I don't know, a couple of days and I'd miss my kid's birthday. Three weeks. (laughs) Sorry, son. There was a slow draft. Uh, So off the board went CMC, CD Lamb, Tyreek Hill. What are you thinking at pick six? Yeah. So at this spot, you know, basically I'm looking at probably one of the last elite wide receivers. I feel like almost, almost every draft I, I do, not everyone, but almost everyone goes six wide receivers uh five wide receivers rather in cmc to start and i'm gonna follow that trend uh i'm on our st brown here at the sixth overall pick to me lines up perfectly with my ranking so i will take amon ra such a you know typical pick from you talking about amon ra you've been we've been here kyle dead we've been here you've been dead on about him for three years so maybe i i should start listening for me, I'm really only considering two players as B. John Robinson or A.J. Brown, who's my next highest wide receiver. I kind of know the room, and I know the way the room is going to go in here, which is heavy wide receiver because they look at our rankings. So I will actually go B. John uh, and start a build that's a little different than the rest of the room. It's not a homer take. I really do have B. John ranked this high, and I think he deserves to. So, yeah, I... I I'm trying to explain to people like, yes, I'm wearing a Falcon shirt right now. Yes, I talk about the Falcons, but I think Bijan uh, is solid through and through. And if we're getting a heavier workload and a better offense, he should smash this year. Yeah. I mean, Bijan's, you know, it feels scary. I feel like in best ball drafts right now, if you don't take wide receiver in round one, but there are a couple of guys that could just break fantasy. Like obviously Christian McCaffrey, we saw it. Brees Hall, we saw it when he wasn't even as efficient as he probably will be this year, second year off the ACL. And Bijan, who, you know, we talked about him a little bit already. It's like finishes the RB eight or nine was good last year, but not great. And now you just get everything out of Atlanta is like, we're going to use Bijan. Bijan's the workhorse. Bijan this, Bijan that. And historically, when players enter year two in the NFL, especially at running back, their touch count goes up massively. So I I think there's a huge ceiling for Bijan. He's a guy that I've been a little underweight on in round one, but I plan to make sure that that's not the case come end of summer. Yeah. Do you have any distinction between Brees and Bijan? They're both awesome picks. I really don't. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm excited to see the Falcons offense with three wide receivers on the field as opposed to, okay, they're they're running two out there. Um, So I'm almost up on the board after Bijan went Brees, A.J. Brown, Puka, Garrett Wilson, and to finish out the first round, Marvin Harrison and Chris Olave at the one-two turn. So that's a nice little uh team right there. I like both those players. Then Jameer Gibbs, Drake London, Nico Collins, and I am almost up on the board. I've noticed that the running backs that show up in ADP on underdog are kind of going to get, you know, left there for a while. So I, man, I hate this spot right now because I look at the wide receivers, Ayuk, Devontae Adams, Jalen Waddell, Debo Samuel, Mike Evans. I I could go the, the high T approach here and go with Jonathan Taylor, but that's not really my brand. 
So I'm going to take the wide receiver that I have highest in my rankings, and that's Jalen Waddle, who uh, I think has upside this year. It's probably who you wanted. Yeah, he was in the queue. I was going to take him. I've been uh, just taking a ton of him. I mean, I know that it can be a little scary when you're like, if Tyreek is worth a top three or four pick, how can Waddle be what he is? We talked about him a lot on our Dynasty show, so make sure you check that out. But I'm in on Waddle. I mean, his yards throughout run, targets throughout run, all those things that we care about that usually give you more signal were fantastic last year and even better than they were two years ago. So if he just stays healthy, if he has the right side of touchdown variance, I mean, he could smash. So after that, I am also looking at wide receiver, even though Jonathan Taylor is intriguing. I'm going to take a guy that I know we differ on a little bit. I'm going to take Brandon Ayuk. Um, Right now, there's a little, you know, kind of, I feel like uncertainty with just the contract situation. But it's about on talent, and the profile we saw last year was awesome. So I'll take Brandon Ayuk. And no, this is not a best ball mania or a tournament. However, if it was, you get that nice week 17 correlation with uh, Detroit and San Francisco. Yeah, there's a lot of wide receivers in the second round that kind of are bunched together, and you're going to see a lot of teams that take Ayuk, Debo, Evans. Uh, Malik Neighbors is kind of creeping up into that end of round two uh, spot. So after you went Debo, Jonathan Taylor, and then Devontae Adams. So who are you hoping for on the way back? So with my next pick, I'll be at uh, pick 30. So that's kind of the sweet spot again for probably another wide receiver, honestly, because you get the guys that could fall there. Like sometimes it's Metcalf, DJ Moore, uh, Steph Diggs, Cooper Cup, Michael Pittman kind of all go in that range. But I mean, I'm not opposed to Kyron in that spot if he does fall there. So those are kind of the names that I'm looking at. I went wide receiver, wide receiver, obviously to start. Um, and you know, it gives me a little flexibility here in round three. I love having an early pick because one, you're getting one of those top four to five players. And then because I'm so much higher, you and I are both higher on Devonta Smith and I love DK Metcalf. Those are the two that I end up getting a lot of the time as some of my favorite combinations in this spot. There's just other guys that carry so much more risk. Uh, DJ Moore, Stefan Diggs that I try to stay away from. So they're both gone there at the 2-3 turn. Man, I love drafting Devonta Smith. Uh, So any thoughts here distinguishing running back? Because you've gone wide receiver, wide receiver. A-chan's still on the board. He's probably going to leave soon. But it's Kyron and Henry up next. Yeah, I think both guys are fine in this range. I haven't taken a ton of Derrick Henry, which feels terrifying. Just when you're on the wrong side of Derrick Henry, it's literally the worst one way or the other but um you know just historically this profile is not one that i want to bet on a ton currently going off the board at rb9 you could have just the 15 touchdown season and like the efficiency doesn't matter but just feels kind of bad to bet on the running back at that part of their career this early in the draft where there is so much opportunity cost to go away from wide receiver so if i was going to take running back with this pick we'll see who's available for me it would be kyron over derrick henry Our rankings do look very different, and I just want to encourage you, you can look at those online in the DFS pass. You can also use the app, but yeah, my my wide receiver rankings are very different, so you're up on the the clock now. Yes, and Kyron did go, as did HN and Laporta, so like no no stacking with me with Amon Ra and Laporta. Someone fell here pretty well past AEP. It's Malik Neighbors, and I'm going to go ahead and take him with this pick. I'm going to go three wide receivers to start. Um just a bet on talent, right? Like it's kind of the same profile as Marvin Harrison Jr. Different team, different quarterback play. I understand all that, but like bet on talent, you get a two round discount, sometimes two round plus discount on a profile. That's just as good in my opinion as Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, So betting on a rookie wide receiver with Daniel Jones, what could uh, could go wrong, Kyle? Yeah. Neighbors, I'm warming up to where he goes, where he should go. And I mentioned before that he is, currently being drafted as the second highest rookie wide receiver of all time. Um, it, it's just one of those things where you look at the team and you ask yourself, how efficient can it be? Uh, we've looked at a stat where it's like, if your team is bottom 10 in total pass attempts, it's really hard to sustain a rookie wide receiver. But Malik Neighbors, where he goes as your wide receiver three, you got to feel good about that upside. I was back on the clock and it was tough for me to take away my heart, but I had to go through the rankings and look at what we had. We built this city. I went with Michael Pittman Jr. Not the sexiest of picks you could take there, but I have him ranked ahead of Stephon Diggs, Zay Flowers, Cooper Cup. Tank Dell was next to my rankings, so it was really between Pity City and Tank Dell. So my start so far through three rounds is Bijan Robinson, Jalen Waddle, 
and Michael Pittman Jr. I think looking at this team and the way that it's built, like I've opened up stacking options with Anthony Richardson if I want to. I know two is going to go late. And I can say that to you because you're probably not going to take those guys. But I mean, you might take Richardson, let's be honest. Um, I did make a change in my rankings, by the way. Oh, that my new number, number, my number one quarterback is now Jalen Hurts. It's no longer Josh Allen. Was that after our dynasty pod discussion? Yeah, on that podcast, I kind of got to discuss where I was at. And I just think at the end of the day, there's more risk with Allen and where he has to go, where I look at Hurts and I have him ranked a little bit ahead of ADP, where I'm totally fine where you have to get him. Um, Hertz just went off the board at, at 404. Out, we had three quarterbacks in a row. Mahomes went, actually went first, uh, which makes sense. Somebody had Kelsey. Then it was Josh Allen, then Hertz. So back to back to back. And I am almost up on the clock with a couple of wide receivers in tow. Stephon Diggs has dropped a good amount. And maybe that's us poo pooing him on our show over and over and over again. It's between Diggs. T. Higgins and George Pickens. And I, I think my rankings say one thing, my heart says another. <laughs> All right. Quick clicks from Kyle because the last second I changed from Diggs to T. Higgins, uh, about three spots behind ADP. So you're up now. Yeah. And I've taken almost no Stefan Diggs, truthfully, but that's going to change now. You know, when you are taking hard player stands, across the portfolio if you are going to dip your toes in the waters and say look you need to have some humility in your rankings like we get stuff wrong literally all the time right and what if we're wrong about stefan Diggs? i want my teams that do have him even though i'm not aggressively targeting him i want my teams that have him to have him at the best possible prices and we know how important adp value is in best ball so i'm getting him at pick 43 currently on underdog he's got an adp of 29.8 so i will take stefan Diggs to go four wide receivers out of the gate do you find that picking in the middle is a lot harder to set up stacks in the early rounds? Like if you want a Kansas City stack, you can kind of hover around that three, four turn. Same thing with Baltimore, where you're if you're closer to the end, you can say, okay, I got Lamar and Andrews. I'm looking at our teams and it's like, okay, well, yes, like you can set yourself up, but it seems like we're gonna be stacking quarterbacks later. Yeah. I I think it's I mean, it's easy to control the stacks when you're at the turn, right? Like if you're at the turn, you can kind of uh, easily predict who's coming back to you. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. You have more teams that could just do weird stuff in between your pick and the next one. But you know, overall, we've we talked about this with stacking. Obviously, your goal is to stack in best ball, but you can kind of manipulate the room. You can take a wide receiver a little early to make sure like the quarterback might fall back to you. And if you don't get the stack, like don't sweat it, right? You just look for another team. You look for other players in your roster, grab those quarterbacks instead. So I'm never really um, too worried about it in the middle of drafts, but it's definitely not as easy to execute as it, it would be otherwise. I like that in the middle of us talking about this, people that normally listen to the podcast don't hear us talk this fast, but we're in a fast draft. So we got to go. Uh, bets. You have four wide receivers through four rounds the lowest of T levels possible. So what are you thinking here? Couldn't be lower, truthfully. They could get lower, <laughs> depending on who comes back to me. Um, yeah, this is kind of the spot where the wide receiver elite like, talent profiles have really dried up. I mean, you've got some exciting guys. I think that could really outperform ADP if things break right. I've got concerns about Hollywood. I've got concerns about like the target competition for Jaden Reed. Um, you know, those are kind of the names in this range. But like, I still want exposure to those guys. But it feels crazy to be like drafting those types of guys over elite quarterbacks that go in this range or running backs and there's a couple running backs that i really really like that go in this spot i'm looking at potentially going with the correlation of joe mixon with stefan diggs and just go on houston offense i could also tackle on cj stroud in this spot and just stack up Diggs. or what i think i'm going to do is i think i'm going to take one of the running backs that i i do want to target this year just explosive in this josh allen offense is james cook so i'm going to take him as my rb1 you're such a turd. Okay. I know you wanted well, him. And, and I really wanted to set this up because I was going to test the room to see if Anthony Richardson could come back to me. But now I'm looking at this squad, looking that I have him. Michael Pittman Jr. Yeah, and I, and I would take him here. Now, if Cook would have fallen, I would have been open to the fact of taking Cook there and then waiting to see. Because there's, I was going to dare the room to see, are they going to do it? Now, Richardson is one of those quarterbacks that people will take 
just because of the rushing upside, they're not really scared. But um, pairing Anthony Richardson with Michael Pittman Jr. felt really, really good. Um, and if you look even closer, I mean, <laughs> got him at pick. 55! So feeling, feeling pretty good about yourself. You missed out on a CJ Stroud stack uh, like a dummy. But uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? It's okay. Um, so through five rounds, my quarterback is Anthony Richardson. My running back is Bijan Robinson. Jalen Waddell, Michael Pittman Jr., and T. Higgins. Betts, why don't you read your roster off before we go to break? Yeah, no quarterback so far. Only one running back is James Cook. And then I had the four wide receivers start out of the gate. Amon Ross St. Brown, Braden Ayuk, Malik Neighbors, and Stephon Diggs. All right, let's take a quick break, and you'll find out about round six. This episode is brought to you by Nespresso. Satisfy your iced coffee craving without leaving home with custom blends. From double espressos to cold brew style. Meant to be iced, meant to be simple, and consistently delicious with a touch of a button. Visit Nespresso.com to learn more. Allstate wants to remind fans that mayhem is everywhere. Like when your fantasy league meets up at your house. Everything's great until the hot plate gets too hot for the tablecloth. Now your kitchen's up in smoke. And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, the cost to fix this is anything but a fantasy. So switch to Allstate, save money, and get protected from mayhem like this. Not available in every state. Based on coverage selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. No big deal. Just a little ad break in the middle of our really fast, stressful best ball draft. I am almost back on the clock in round six, and I'm kind of talking myself into looking at Kyle Pitts here. I have B. John Robinson on this roster. Kyle Pitts is on the board, can get some Atlanta magic here. God, that I mean, I would get roasted in the Discord, though. You would, but you kind of have to. It's like like a brand, right? I I guess. I, I guess I'm just one of those guys that just gets toasted over and over again. People don't like it. Um... The running backs kind of dry up in this area too. There's a lot of time where people are drafting their wide receiver fours. Um, and there's a lot of guys here. Calvin Ridley, Xavier Worthy, Chris Godwin, Jordan Addison, Lad McConkey. How do you feel about this range of wide receivers? They're expensive for the profiles that they have. But that's just the way underdog is, right? Like every wide receiver is pushed up. Years ago, we could get a prospect like Lad McConkey in like the 10th round, right? But now we're paying like legit prices for him and and not just him, but like all these guys, right? Like Keon Coleman's profile, man. I don't know. This feels dirty. A 72nd overall for Keon Coleman just doesn't feel good, truthfully. Um, so you're paying a tax for wide receiver in this range, which is why I prefer going, you know, two or three, at least in the first three rounds and like get the elites. And then like I've done, you know, so far, get three or four and then kind of like cool off in this range is how I've been attacking it personally. I don't know about you, but that's my uh, my personal stance. It's also a tight end dead zone where like the next tight end up on the board is Evan Ingram at pick 78. So if you have your quarterback, you can kind of like wait and figure out if you're going to stack with a tight end later. Um, I kind of just ignore that position at this point in the, in the draft. The running backs are, are pretty rough. So my rankings actually cause me to want to reach a little bit in this area because I think all the wide receivers are pretty much in the same tier. So I'm going to get a running back that I think I've talked about a lot on the show. Uh, it's David Montgomery. I just want touchdown upside. So I'm taking him about nine spots ahead of ADP. Well, I have terrible news for you, Kyle, because you were not looking at the draft board. There was one tight end left on the draft board. His name is George Kittle. And because I have Brandon Ayuk, I would like to bet on the 49ers. And I'm going to take Mr. Kittle with the selection 67th overall. Good luck figuring that out, buddy. Actually, he's way better in best ball. <laughs> I had scrolled down. <laughs> did, did you just not see him there? <laughs> I had literally scrolled down thinking like, okay, I've got David Montgomery queued. Let me see if I can get Kyle Pitts. Uh, I do have Kittle a little bit lower than where he goes. And I have Montgomery mm, basically back to back with Kittle in my rankings. So. Yeah, we're, we're both high on Montgomery. I mean, I think you got him 66 overall. His ADP is like, what, low 70s? I mean, that's that's totally fine. All right, going into the seventh round, what's on your mind? So I have one running back. I've got an elite tight end, so obviously I'm not looking at tight end uh, for a little while here. And I've got those four wide receivers. So I do have uh, a couple guys here in this range that like I'll take when they fall. One of those guys is Lab McConkie. Um, I'm also interested in Rasheed Rice. Just 
again, kind of talent profile makes so much sense for we saw it. He's entering year two. Yes, he's going to get suspended. No, that's not ideal. But, you know, in best ball, we talk about that late season upside being so important that I have kind of bought the dip on him. And, you know, to me, the Rasheed Rice player take is not just like, hey, he was good as a rookie. Let's bet on him in year two. It's also a bet against potentially Hollywood Brown, who I've got concerns about. I know you do, too. But uh, all that was just wasted breath because Rasheed Rice is gone. (laughs) I think Hollywood Brown might be my least favorite ADP on the board. Yeah, I pretty much agree. Him and Zay Flowers are the type of players that I have been betting against and maybe, maybe I'll be wrong, but it's just guys that I haven't really liked a lot. Um, so wide receivers still on the board in the seventh round, Deandre Hopkins, Brian Thomas, Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson, and JSN. Are you still looking to add to your wide receiver room? Uh, even though you have four through the first six rounds. Yeah. So this spots, it's so interesting because I don't love this wide receiver group a ton, but it is kind of a nice spot. Like I said, like if you can get kind of a rookie upside case here, like sometimes Brian Thomas falls. I mentioned Lavaconky, but he went in this draft. This is kind of the range where they go. The running backs, you know, it's like Aaron Jones, um, like Najee Harris, like Zamir White goes in, you know, the 80s. Like this is kind of where you get into like the classic RB dead zone. Now in this draft, it's not really the dead zone because the landscape is so different. But like from an RB ADP, just positional standpoint, it kind of is where we're at. It feels gross, man. And I don't think there's a huge difference between these guys and the guys that go, you know, around a pick 100, truthfully. So I'm not really eyeing a lot of these running backs. I think it probably is a wide receiver pick. And I'm going to roll with a round one talent profile in Brian Thomas Jr. Also lets me set up a potential stack backdoor with Trevor Lawrence. I do need to inform you that Jamison Williams just went 76 overall in this draft. And you said that one day he's going to end up in the top 75. Current ADP is 82.7. I give it another three weeks. So I, I'm between three wide receivers here. And one of our rules in best ball, you can look at online, some of our roster construction things, is I need at least four wide receivers through round seven. That's kind of like you have to be able to go there with that. So DeAndre Hopkins, Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson. Oh, man. I'm just going to go with Hopkins. I feel pretty good getting him nine spots against ADP. And then also give me some weird upside if I want to stack with Levis later. Um, So we're in the seventh round and there are way too many running backs on the board. I mean, this is the spot where a lot of people feel a little forced. So Najee, Ramondre, Jonathan Brooks, who we like, Zamir White, DeAndre Swift, Jalen Warren, Zach Moss. I mean, the board is just flush with running backs. Is it just if people read your zero RB targets article, then that's all they need to draft? Uh, Yeah, I think so. I mean, the thing with with the zero RB or hero RB builds is I think you want to diversify the players that you have in those builds because people that draft the same way, people that draft hero RB teams or zero RB teams, they kind of all have the same targets, right? Like everyone loves Jalen Warren for obvious reasons. Uh, A lot of people are targeting like Ty Chandler for obvious reasons. So while I do want our listeners and, and people in the DFS pass and UDK plus to like get those guys that we like to bet on i'm also not opposed to like look i don't know who the cincy backfield is like i don't know who it's gonna be but i don't think zach moss is incredible i don't think jace brown's incredible but i want exposure to both those guys and just like hope that someone hits in this ambiguous backfield so i'm trying to keep my mind open generally to uh to the rbs that kind of go in this range and trying to diversify a little bit i want to give a shout out to effie bar who is at the uh at the 12th pick so at the the turn they took deandre swift about five spots ahead of ADP. But if they were using my rankings, <laughs> then uh, they actually got him behind where I would take him. DeAndre Swift, I know you don't like it, but I think DeAndre Swift is going to end up being one of my you know, top five running back exposures this year. Yeah, I, he's so tough Like, because I can see the path, right? Like He gets a big bag of money. Um, he has a pass catching profile that we like. The Bears have a pretty easy strength of schedule. He doesn't have a ton of competition for touches. I get the path, but like part of me is still like, I cannot get out of my head that the Eagles literally entered week one and were like, you're the backup. Remember the week one, it was Kenny Gainwell, like that got all the touches and then he has a rib injury. Swift comes in and Swift runs away with the job as he probably should have. But I also just look at the advanced metrics, like all of his yards came before contact with Philly, who is a great offensive line. The Bears can develop their offensive line. They can get better. But obviously, I think it's a downgrade there. 
Um, you could argue maybe gets more touchdown upside because there's no tush push with Jalen Hurts. So I get all those factors, and I'm kind of stuck on a guy that I feel like we keep betting on over and over again, and it hasn't happened. And usually there's a reason for that, right? It's so like Swift's a guy that if I'm taking bears, tack him on, build your bear stack, you know, get your exposure there. But he's not for me an aggressive target like he is, I think, for you. Oh man. I, I hate where where this ended up because Jonathan Brooks was cued for me, but I'm going with a player in an offense that I already have. So I have T Higgins. I'm adding onto that and taking Zach Moss here, just believing in the Bengals uh, offense and their schedule. I mean, we talked about that. It's fourth place. One of the better ones in the league. They're have a win total of 10 and a half. So I'm adding to my running back room. I have Bijan, Dave Montgomery, Zach Moss. I feel pretty good about my touchdown equity there. Like I don't really have to touch running back for a while and it's different than how I normally build. Um, but in this spot I, I took Bijan. And so I kind of had to, go different than the room. Uh, so Zach Moss, the least sexy pick I could take, and you took someone equally unsexy. I think this could be even less sexy. Um, I love Jalen Warren, but Najee Harris's price is now at a point where like, I'm kind of in. <laughs> like, you know, with the current state of the offense, like I think it is going to be the Najee and Jalen Warren show, obviously with Arthur Smith there with the uh, rush rate that we should project with what he showed in Atlanta. They were already super run heavy last year. I think there's enough touches for both guys to get there. And I had a pretty big fade on Najee last year just because he was, what, round four, I believe, in ADP. Now that he goes sometimes in round late eight, early nine, it's like you're not asking him to do what you were last year. So as gross as it is, I will take Najee here, and I will take him uh, roughly nine picks after ADP. Yeah, th- there's a range here of a bunch of running backs that I think we like in builds more as like RB2s. So I, I kind of looking right now, I wish I would have gotten another wide receiver in earlier, um, but the, the board just didn't fall that way. So uh, through through eight rounds, how are you feeling about your team? I feel like I need a quarterback somewhat badly. <laughs> I have no quarterback. I've got two running backs and I've got the stud wide receivers. So that's that's how I like to build. So this is kind of my usual uh, go to here. Um, but man, I feel like I'm going to miss out on some ceiling competing with these other teams that have the elite uh the elite quarterbacks i should say yeah i feel good about the way that i've started my team i am gonna have to figure out tight end because i don't have anybody there and we don't really like the late round guys so this is shaping up to be a three tight end team with richardson i'm gonna just take two and uh probably stack them up with somebody later but um i really need to build out my wide receiver room i only have four right now i don't want to reach on certain players but uh, I also hate Cortland Sutton. He always sticks around in drafts. It's like the most so, boring click of all time. But like you know, he's probably a pretty decent pick in this range, just because he is the one uh, in Denver. So I get it. Yeah. All right. So who are you taking here? Well, we're gonna wait and see who Adam Curtis takes and Baba McQueen. What a name! Um, I've got two picks before my next one. I mentioned lacking some ceiling at quarterback. Jane Daniels is in the range right now. Who I love it. I don't have. McLaurin which you know for me is painful to say but he's a guy that I'm comfortable just like tacking on Senate or Dotson later and kind of just like hoping they got a couple spike weeks I just think he's going to run enough that he will be very very good for fantasy so if Jane Daniels falls I will take him here at 102 I, I it really is one of my favorite backdoor ways and, and I'm fine with him as a quarterback one knowing that like I missed out I can look later and just say to myself like okay um I can get Dotson and I, I feel confident in getting Dotson at this point. So, um, man, Corlin Sutton, I hate Corlin Sutton. <laughs> you don't think his, gonna... um, 10 touchdowns on like 19 targets last year is, is repeatable, Kyle. <laughs> no, I'm going to take someone that I have ranked higher that I'm more excited about. I'll take Rashid Shahid here, our boy, uh, to, to add right at ADP. So, uh, <laughs> right on target. I worry <laughs> when people, st- I worry when people start looking at names and looking at ADP values and just saying, I need to take this player just only because um, in this format, where it's just 12 of us, I'm a, I, it, the value doesn't matter as much. I'm not comparing him to the rest of the field that says, I got Cortland Sun at pick 90. And you're like, well, I got him at pick 120. It's like, it doesn't really matter when we're playing with just, you know, the dudes, the right. group of... The, with, so with your friends. Um, and that's a good point too, because that changes strategy. Like I haven't even considered... Like it happened for me, you know, in in round one, round two with Amon Ra and Ayuk. Like I wasn't 
trying to create a week 17 stack and in these normal 12 man leagues we're not even considering that you know it's it's kind of stack your team and like draft the best guys that you can so to speak with good roster construction um and that's the one thing i don't really think about at all is week 17 in these drafts now i'm talking a ton of trash about Cortland Sutton, but if he makes it back this time oh home oh. run pick baby it's funny because if he goes to ADP, oh, he doesn't. He he's he's gone off the board. But if somebody you can trash somebody one round, and the next round you be like, oh, he's a great fit on my roster, great ADP value by me. That best ball's funny. It is. It's a, it's a weird little weird little sport. Um, I still don't have a tight end, so I'm just talking out loud. It's just me and you. I wouldn't mind David and Joku here. It sets up me later to say if I want Deshaun Watson as a backdoor stack, I can do that. Good value too. Um, great value i mean i might get him like 12 spots after adp which i i feel like i should cash out now if take I it get to him. the but bank there's Kyle. also take it to the bank there's also a bunch of running backs here sitting for you so your team only has two through 10 rounds are you interested in any of these guys here because i'm not going to be taking one of them yeah I, this is a spot where i love to take running back i mean there are quarterbacks that i like i mentioned trevor lawrence as a possibility um you know i don't have dolphins but like two it kind of goes in this range i think that's fine Jared Goff is is on my radar, but he's a little early based off ADP. The running backs that I've been looking at in this range frequently, Tajay Spears, who we've talked about a ton in the zero RB targets list. Um, I also have been taking some Brian Robinson, which for me would make a lot of sense with Jane Daniels. All right. So David Njoku did make it back to me. A little run on tight ends here. Got me scared. Dallas Goddard, Dalton Schultz, David Njoku. I just took at the 10 06, so a little value there. And you are on the clock. So both those running backs are there, Tajay Spears and Brian Robinson. I think what I should do is take Brian Robinson and just yes. bet on Washington. I'm already betting on Jane Daniels. And I'm going to do that. Even though I feel like what I would do if this was a different draft, probably take Tajay Spears and hope that I know the room and hope that Brian Robinson comes back to me. I don't think he will, though. So again, you draft as if you're correct in best ball. I'm already saying Jane Daniels is great. Washington is better than we think. And if those bets hit, then Brian Robinson will probably hit at the CDP. Yeah, we have Brian Robinson at 108 and 109 in our rankings. So I think the way that we have it set up, we have Jaden Daniels as a top 100 player. And then you can come back and get the running back here. Later on, you can get Dotson and feel pretty good about the team. Now, I'm assuming you're not wanting like four or five Washington pieces. Unless they're winning the Super Bowl this year, Kyle. Then no, I do not. So yeah, I have Dotson in the queue. I've got the Senator, obviously. I mean, imagine not having him in the queue. And Luke McCaffrey. But yeah, I'll probably tack on one more pass catcher and, and then just be all set with Washington. Okay. I'm enjoying where I'm at now, thinking about my other quarterbacks that I can get. Like right now, two is going to set up unless the Tyreek manager gets him. Jared Goff is somebody that we like his splits a lot. If I just want to get in on Detroit at a cheaper level, I already have David Montgomery. Um, you know, normally I would look at this team and say, oh man, I missed out on Amon Ra and Gibbs. But in a 12 person league, I just want to bet on a good team, bet on his home splits and just say, I get the touchdowns. I get Montgomery, I get Goff, and I feel fine as a secondary stack if I'm in on that. If I like the Lions, if I like the Colts for my team, I feel good. So uh, I don't feel pressured to go a certain way with, with my stacking options. Um, but I definitely feel like I have two or three in front of me. You do, depending on what these teams in front of you go with. Um, interesting spot in the draft here. Like you mentioned the quarterbacks that are available, but it also is sort of a interesting spot for some of these running backs too, where they're like the tier two zero RB guys, right? It's like Blake Corum, like the Cowboys running backs go here. Have you been taking much of the Dallas guys? I honestly haven't. I think it's one of those things where we're going to see the ADP move when I think about tournaments. So, I, you know, we'll get some more clarity in training camp and see what it is. Uh, there he goes. Jared Goff off the board to stack with Jamison Williams and Sam Laporta. So I get it. He goes where he's supposed to go. Um, and you apparently can't stack him either with your Amon Ra. I was going to say he wasn't going to make it to you because I was going to take him and just complete that stack, uh, unfortunately. And when I'm looking at my team, like, you know, I've got, I mentioned Amon Ra, I've got Ayuk, Neighbors, Diggs, Brian Thomas, like all those stacking partners except for the Giants, they're all gone. And when I'm looking at my wide receiver draft capital, like I've already spent a pretty decent amount on 
elite wide receivers that like I don't want to go overboard and draft nine of them. So I'm looking at quarterbacks that I know I can get backdoor sacks coming later. One of those guys I think could be Justin Herbert. So I'm going to take Herbert actually with this pick. He's unstacked currently, but I will try to tack on someone later. If I have to bite the bullet and go with Huge, I will. Maybe Josh Palmer is around, something like that. But um, Daniels and Justin Herbert, for me, I can be done at quarterback. Was there any temptation to take dots in there? Or did you just forget? No, I mean, he's in the queue, but I'm just going to play the game and hope I can get him to come back. He's 135 overall in ADP. You think he'll make his way back? With After what he saw board? last year, dude, everyone wants him this year. He was great. I'm going to do something that is going to shock you. I'm going to take a player that I poo-pooed on over and over Jerry and Judy? over again. Oh. I took Josh Downs. <laughs> uh, I love when you come around, Kyle, when you when you realize you were wrong. You know, it's it's nice to see. No, this is more of like just to remind you that, hey, you know what? I, I listen to you sometimes. And <laughs> sometimes. If, if I have to donate in the name of Josh Downs, at least it's in a draft that I'm in with you. But, you know, I've got so I've got a stack here. Anthony Richardson, Michael Pittman Jr., Josh Downs. I do have Jerry Judy and Jahan Dotson queued up as wide receivers. I'd love to add on with all of these running backs. I mean, a lot of our zero RB targets are just sitting here on the board. And I'm going to wait till one of them falls to me and maybe take them as my RB4. But yeah, I feel like this depth spot in the draft, a lot of people don't know what to do because they've gone with one strategy. You know, I went zero RB. They do all their their uh, wide receivers, and then they're like, oh, man, I don't want to take all of these running backs on my team. You know, you don't want to take Austin Eckler, Jerome Ford, and Zach Charbonnet. You might want one of them. So is there any running back that you like above the rest? And I could just look at your rankings and snipe you. You could look at my rankings, which would be very uh, smart of you to do, Kyle. Specifically talking about the guys that kind of have gone in this range that you've talked about with like Ford, Charbonnet. They're all kind of the same bet to me, where it's like, you know, they're probably entering camp on paper as the RB2, especially Charbonnet. Um, Dowdle, kind of the, the uncertainty there. But like, I've been vocal. I don't really think the Nick Chubb situation is going to get better. Like, certainly over the course of time, he'll get healthier. But it's like, will he ever be the same guy? I don't think so. So I've taken a decent amount of Jerome Ford, where it's like, if we knew Nick Chubb was going to be placed on PUP list, or if you knew he wasn't going to be 100% until mid-November or, or something like that, like I think Ford's ADP would just be so much higher. So I have I have a ton of Jerome Ford right now. Yeah, my two players queued up from here, Jerome Ford and Jahan Dotson. So you will be getting one of those players. Lovely. That you will I will be queue them up. Ex- yeah, it's not bad. I For me, it's I'm betting on Cleveland a little bit. I have David Njoku. We actually talked about that weird stack, that running back tight end stack as a really good one last year, if you were betting on the Browns and you took Ford late, uh, he was a better pick than some of those other running backs, but he just goes off the board. So he's gone and I'm taking Jahan Dotson and you can go cry. That's fine. You know what? Because there are two of my favorite picks in all best ball currently available to me. And I don't really know which one I want. Ty Chandler, I think is an awesome pick. Marshawn Lloyd, I also think is an awesome pick. And I'm going to go ahead and take... I'm going to take Marshawn Lloyd, which just, I think, better offense. You know, there's like people would think that the Packers would be better this year than the Vikings. That's my coin flip decision, but I have a ton of both. Little early tease here. Next week on the Footballers Main Show, we're going through some early sleeper picks. And Marshawn Lloyd is showing up as a guy the guys really want to be in on and take stabs at. Now, we've gone through this before. It was called Tank Bigsby last year, where we said, here's a third round running back that could get, you know, could steal the job away. And then Tank Bigsby said, I just going to go sit on the sidelines for a while. I'm going to catch one pass all year. It was over Have in week one. Ho- did you see, I think it was Ian Harditz posted <laughs> all of Tank Bigsby's targets? Yes, I did. Yeah. It no, was not great. It was good stuff. Um, So here we are in round 13. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Oh, that ball is out of here. And coming right for us. I caught it. And I earned 3% back when I bought this glove online with my Bank of America customized cash rewards card. Be your own hero 
earn 3% back in the category of your choice, including online shopping with the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash customized cash. What would you like the power to do? Welcome to the Flash Finds Podcast, the world's fastest podcast where we explore how Facebook can help you with the stuff you're into. I'm Emma Rogue, joined by Nathan the Cat Lady, a Facebook creator. So Nathan, if you're into pets, what kind of stuff can you find on Facebook? Well, I make reels about useful tips for pet owners. For instance, cats don't like still water, so all of my cats have cat fountains. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. What a great episode. See you next time on the Flash Finds podcast, all about discovering the stuff on Facebook you care about. Bye. All right, Bets, why don't you read off your team through 12 rounds as you are about to pick next? Yes, I've got Jane Daniels and Justin Herbert. I've paired Daniels with Brian Robinson. I have also got James Cook, Najee Harris, Marshawn Lloyd, a wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, Brandon Ayuk, Malik Neighbors, Stefan Diggs, Brian Thomas. And then at tight end, I have George Kittle. Yep. For me, I have Anthony Richardson at quarterback, at running back, Bijan, Dave Montgomery, Zach Moss, at wide receiver, Jalen Waddell, Michael Pittman Jr., who's stacked, T. Higgins, DeAndre Hopkins, Rashid Shaheed, Josh Downs, and Jahan Dotson. So I've kind of tried to make it up in this range of players with a bunch of wide receivers that I'm not taking a bunch of zeros at the very end. Um, and then David and Joku at tight end. So you, my friend, are about to be on the clock. I am about to be on the clock, three picks away. And, you know, I mentioned I'm going to I'm gonna take someone I think I could backdoor stack. It doesn't feel pretty. In fact, it feels quite terrible. But if I'm betting on Justin Herbert, give me like three spike weeks, huge. Please give me a couple spike weeks. So I'm going to take Quentin Johnson if he falls just because Palmer went, you know, obviously Ladd is long, long gone. And if I don't take Quentin Johnson here, I'm probably sacking him with DJ Chark, which which feels so, so bad. So I will take Quentin Johnson here uh, if he, if he does fall to me. I don't love the running backs in this range. Nick Chubb is just buried in our rankings. Jalen Wright is a fun player. Ray Davis is an old player. Jaleel McLaughlin, another fun player. I feel like right now, the way that my team's set up, I'm not loving where I'm landing right now. Part of me just wants to just go Darnell Mooney and log out and just just call it a day. Because he's a Falcon. (laughs) <laughs> because he's a falcon um oh man i'm gonna go for upside here and look at the running back position and just say that i believe in the miami offense that somehow some way jalen wright is going to get some touches but i just i can't click nick chubb at all yeah i mean we're, he's sitting here you know 137.6 this is adp as of our recording we're sitting here at pick 151 and both of us were just like Nah, man. Like sometimes when you get these ADP values, it feels like so, it feels so good. It's like so clean. You know, the data is favorable, but I think he's just going to keep falling. So like if you want some Nick Chubb in your portfolio, just wait till August and you can probably get him in like the 15th round or 14th round. I do think he's going to fall quite a bit over the next two months. Yeah, I I worry about, because you're always trying to get, be right and ahead of the group. And then if it just keeps falling, you look back at your exposure like, oh, I was taking Nick Chubb in May at pick 100. Right. And you're like, what what, what was I doing? So a lot of these injury things, bets you've done some research, you have some articles out there, but it's just over time, there's going to be players that break through, but it, it's just a bad bet. I think the number we were saying was like 70, 75% of the time, they don't hit their ADP. Right. And it's it's a little different conversation in best ball, and specifically yeah, redraft versus best ball, when you care so much about just the late season upside. But yeah, the study that I do every year looks at basically players that miss time throughout the offseason. And what I'm talking about more in the study is like players coming off surgery, players that have a hamstring injury in camp, they roll their ankle in camp and miss a couple of weeks, like those sort of things. We often feel like we're compelled to like, you know, he fell two spots or he fell a couple rounds. Like I got to take him here. Look at this value. But oftentimes, even though you are taking him at a value, you're sort of just um, getting what feels like value that ends up being not you know, in reality when the season comes to an end. So yeah, I'll have that study out as we get over the course of the summer. And my list of those guys that I'm tracking are all in the ultimate draft kit. All right. Riddle me this. I was looking at the teams and seeing who had Falcons on the roster out of curiosity, but also just looking at the board and it's usually, okay, the Drake London guy, the Kyle Pitts guy. Well, when you look at the rosters here, 
The person that had Drake London also had Kyle Pitts, but they also went for a Ram super stack. And so Kirk Cousins is sitting on the board and I don't see many people wanting to stack him. So I know I could talk that out with you. I know that you could think about doing it. Um, but I also have a backdoor option to Sean Watson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Darnell Mooney, who might be my last wide receiver, Love and it. then dare the room to take Kirk Cousins unstacked, a naked Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that's a that's a good play. Just like we talked about in our previous shows, don't force the stack. Let it come to you. And if he doesn't come back, you know you've got um, Deshaun Watson kind of in your back pocket. I'm going to continue the Chargers stack here. I'm going to take Kamani Vidal and take him as my RB5. I'm not going to lie. like I've really cooled off on aggressively taking him i've taken i'm still taking him but when we wrote up our zero rbs you know our our list and he really was kind of like a 16th round pick it was like i could see this but part of me is like i don't know what to do with this room kyle the gus edwards room who's he's dealing with an injury kamani vidal and jk dobbins like it just feels like something here isn't going to work and i don't know which player it is i'll bet against 29 year old gus gus edwards in this draft and I've been betting against J.K. Dobbins pretty much all offseason. But where are you at with Vidal? Because he was a, a great pick, I feel like, early on. And as his ADP has ri- risen, I've kind of cooled a little bit. Yeah, you got him at 163. When I'm looking at our rankings, we have him in that range. But I feel like where people are taking him. So I, we both have him at 168. So we're close to that. But at this point, you kind of have to keep riding that train. And a six-round running back, historically, is a great thing to bet against in best ball. Like, if anything, I'm just wondering, like, is Dobbins now a player that's just been buried for way too long that now he kind of becomes interesting? We'll see. It's going to take a lot of convincing just for me personally to click the button on him with with training camp. You know, it's like this guy is coming off a torn Achilles. He hasn't been healthy in three plus years. He's got 50K in guarantees on his deal. I mean, that's literally nothing in the NFL, right? So, um I get it. I get wanting to attack a run heavy offense with an ambiguous room, but it's going to take a lot for me to get there. All right. K Webb finally did take Kirk Cousins and he took him 24 spots, 22 spots after ADP. However, uh, so he had Tyler Algier in his roster, but he also took him with Trevor Lawrence, who also has a week 12 bye. So I dared him to do it. He did it. I'm totally fine to be able to move on knowing I have some other options. Uh, Deshaun Watson is a stacking option I have with David Njoku. I would prefer him with Amari Cooper, but that's still in range for me. But uh, we're in round 15, and you are about to be on the clock. Yeah, interesting spot in the draft, and obviously your stacks are going to dictate your picks here. Your roster construction is going to dictate your picks. I've got the two, I think, like tier three-ish quarterbacks of Daniels and Herbert, so I'm not really looking at quarterback here. I'm going to go with those two guys and just bet that I'm right. Running back, I've got five of them. They're kind of a modified hero RB build with James Cook. And then I've got the elite wide receivers and, and Quentin Johnson, <laughs> which which what could go wrong. Um, so it's kind of the range where I do start to look at tight end. I've only got George Kittle. I don't think I'm going to stack uh, any of the Chargers guys with Herbert. It's just a thin bet, in my opinion. And Ben Sinnott is already gone. I kind of like Hunter Henry this year. With, I do too. With the Browns system coming over the new OC, Hunter Henry, you know, is going to give you probably somewhere in the range of like five ish top 12 weeks, which like, don't get me wrong. He's not going to win your league, but as a tight end two or three for your build, I think that's totally fine. Yeah. I like Hunter Henry. He was somebody I had queued up hoping he would fall to me. Um, So I did have a chance where I could have taken a stack earlier. Deshaun Watson was one of those players where I was like, okay, well I haven't Joku. I like to have that stack, but I kind of just dared the room And I looked at what people have. A lot of people with two quarterback builds. I'm not really worried for the most part of people saying I'm going to take a third quarterback here. So Deshaun Watson kind of fell in my lap as my QB2 that I get to stack with uh, Njoku. I've got him about 13 spots after ADP. So my quarterbacks are Richardson and Watson. Would you feel comfortable with that in a two quarterback build? Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I really like it. And we talked about the Browns a lot that I feel like it's it's chef's kiss, Kyle. I feel like I'm just slowly on this show every week, kind of like becoming the Browns guy, which I hate. <laughs> I hate being that guy. But what could go what could wrong? go wrong, Kyle? But the values there, I think they're going to play a little faster this year. They played faster when Watson was was healthy under center. I don't know, man. It seems like a, a decent backdoor stack. 
The value was there, he said, as he deposited once again in his account <laughs> and realized realized that he is We can been... all relate. <laughs> yeah. You know, with ADP, you get a mix on your roster of guys you got past ADP, and it looks really nice. Like, when I look at mine, I'm like, oh, sweet. David Njoku around later. Darnell Mooney over around later. Uh, you know, some of these other guys, I'm like, oh, man, I just felt so good. And then you look at other guys, you're like, okay, I took him three or four spots ahead of ADP. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're not consistently looking down your roster and going, I took eight players way ahead of ADP. Like if you took eight guys, 10 plus spots ahead of ADP, you're basically saying you're way smarter than the room and you were reaching on stacks when you could let them fall. Uh, a couple of picks here I'm going to highlight. And then at the very end, we'll go through the rosters and talk about it. But Isaiah Likely, love it. Pick 178 here by uh, A. McCarthy 91. I think he's a solid tight end too. You get some upside. Are you fine with him in two uh, tight end builds of just saying like, okay, I might not get a weekly score, but I'm counting on my tight end one anyway to give me that. Yeah, I I love both guys. Like obviously everyone knows I'm in a Mark Andrews, but I like, like Isaiah Likely. Like he's a top, what, in rankings, like weekly rankings on our site, he's going to be ranked as like a top eight play every single week if Mark Andrews is out in those games, right? And you know you're getting that upside there. So I don't know where you're at, Kyle, but sometimes I'll take Mark Andrews and likely on the same team. It's sort of like a unique thing that I would only do like in a tournament. But I'm just saying, give me the Ravens tight end room. And if one of these guys misses, like I'm set and it's going to be incredible. Um, a little bit of a galaxy brain play, but I just think the, the tight ends are going to be the engine of the offense plus Zay Flowers. Oh, I love it. We have likely, I have him at 164. You have him at 170. I, I think we're just way ahead of market on him. Yeah. I, I mean, we have him ahead of TJ Hawkinson. At least, you know, I have Hawkinson buried. I'm starting to come around a little bit. Um, we have him ahead of Kate Otten, Ben Sennett, Tyler Con Conklin. I mean, a lot of guys, he's kind of buried in that 180 range and we have him in the 160s. So I think Isaiah likely will be a player that a lot of people have on their rosters. All right. I'm sitting here in the 16th round looking for a little bit of upside here. And I've seen some whispers in the bushes in camp that says the RB2 in San Francisco is clearly Isaiah, uh, Elijah Mitchell. Dang it. And it's not <laughs> farting around with Garendo or whoever else. So Elijah Mitchell is kind of one of those players I will take as an RB5, RB6. And my running back room is done. Yeah, he was in the queue. And I've got Ayuk. I've got Kittle. It would have been a perfect let's bet on the Niners stack yeah, so right. you are an absolute turd um <laughs> as a friend you're just so you know you're a turd um i'm gonna take pop douglas with this pick i don't really love it but again Gone. just when you are in the spot i'm just look usually leaning towards correlation and saying like i'm kind of already in a little bit of a way betting on hunter henry i'm betting on the passing game i like drake may as being better than people think it's a value give me pop douglas and i'm probably probably done at wide receiver with seven of them here yeah right now i have a two five eight one build with two more rounds to go and i feel pretty good i mean there's some wide receivers at the very end that we have ranked ahead of adp like one of the giants wide receivers is usually somebody i have queued up if it's slayton if it's hyatt i have slayton a little higher is that how you feel i do yeah i think he's i think he's on track to be the starting wide receiver and two wide receiver sets across from malik neighbors I do need to get one more tight end. Um, there's a guy, I don't know if you've heard of him before, but he is the most reliable <laughs> man on the planet. When you need him, and your routes he'll run, run around. league. I mean, Kate Otten, baby. Take it to the bank. Yeah, Kate Otten's interesting. Johnny Smith's on the board. Jawan Johnson is hurt. And then somebody that's kind of been climbing an ADP that I do have queued for my last pick because I don't think anybody's going to take him. Kind of like Jelani Woods. If I'm stacking up Colts. Now, I think that's almost a better tournament play for me than saying I'm going to have four Colts with a, a rushing quarterback, but he's definitely somebody I'm interested in. Um, Yeah. Do you, have a, do you have a feeling about any of these tight ends that I need to take? Because I know you're not really thinking about it. Yeah, let me pull up the list here. Like you mentioned, it's Kate Otten. If I have any Bucks stuff, that's an obvious play here. Um, Jawan Johnson was a guy that I was taking a ton of before the foot injury which really stinks. Um, it's part of the risk of drafting early, but you know, the saints, we talked about it. Like they're so thin at wide receiver with Alave and 
Rashid Shahid that like behind those guys, there's not a lot of proven talent. You know, you've got Kamara on the decline. I mean, Taysom's going to do his thing, of course. He always does. But um, I've been I've been taking a decent amount of Juwan Johnson just over the course of the summer. We'll wait and see what I do as we get towards the regular season. Like, if he's still behind health-wise, I'm not going to continue to buy the dip. But he's a guy I've taken a lot of. I don't know what what your thoughts are on that group. I think I just want somebody in a 12-person league that's just going to get snaps. So I'll, I'll, I'll take KDOT and after you. Yeah, makes sense. I'm going to take CEH here. This is gross. This is gross. But I need... I need running back uh, depth on this roster. It was kind of a zero RB team. And with those builds, like I'm almost always needing at least six, sometimes seven running backs. CEH, I think is the unquestioned RB2. Wouldn't you agree entering camp? And not that CEH is really talented at this point. I think we all know that. But we saw last year when he got a start without Pacheco, he was very, very usable. So this is a, this is an if Pacheco misses time play, CEH will probably be the guy. Yeah, I don't know if you've been uh, looking at the rankings, but he's now in our top 200, CEH. So I, I think just this is the right mine this morning. Yep, and somehow we are right there. So he's 200th overall. Uh, I took Kate Otten at pick 199. So we are moving to the last pick. Part of me just wants to do like a YOLO pick, but for the podcast, I do want to point out that we are at pick 200 right now, and Aaron Rodgers is still on the board. 40 picks out past ADP. What does that say about Rodgers? And dude, I honestly, when we were writing up our blurbs for the best ball primer for the Jets, I was like, I just haven't been taking Jets. I'll take Brees Hall if he's there. I'll take Tyler Conklin, but I just haven't been taking them at all. Yeah. I mean, I've taken Rodgers a couple times, like in this sort of scenario now in the rooms I've been in, it has not been this extreme, but um, he will fall. Like if it's pretty much like if the Garrett Wilson or Brees guy or, you know, drafters have him, they'll target him sometimes. But like, I don't see a lot of people that are like, oh, dude, this Malachi Corley <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers stack is going to be it this year. So he's a guy and it's good to know like which guys that is. He's a guy that will fall quite a bit. So, yeah, I, I understand it because um, he's, he's not giving you obviously anything with his legs. Yeah, this is one of those picks, too, that. If you get him, you get to take a screenshot and say, I got Aaron Rodgers four rounds past ADP where there's somebody else out there. So there it goes. Effie Barr took him at 204, which is a wild, wild uh, value you can get. Now, he doesn't have any Jets, but I I get it. His quarterback build is Caleb Williams, Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers. I'm totally fine just throwing on a third quarterback at the very end in this type of format. Um, So my final pick, I could add to my running back room somebody like Donta Foreman since I'm already betting on the Browns. That's probably my preferred strategy if he stays in there. There's some high upside picks if you just want to shoot for the moon uh, like Justin Fields, but I can't do it. Elijah Moore, I don't hate myself, so I can't do it. Yeah, I, I, I would love to take Donta Foreman as my last running back here to pair with some of my Cleveland Brown stuff. And I do like Jelani Jones or Jelani Jones. Jelani, Jelani Jones. Woods. Is that a creative player? <laughs> that's yeah. That's where you're just like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll just throw in that name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're finishing up here in the last round and then I will get to go through the names unless Ch- Claypool just went. I haven't been taking him at all. I haven't heard that statement all summer, Kyle. <laughs> um, I got to ask you some advice. So I'm on the clock here uh, right after you. Drake May is on the board. I have taken... You love Drake May. Listen, I've taken Pop Douglas and I've taken Hunter Henry. This is an easy, complete the double stack. Like, I don't need him. I've got Jane Daniels. I've got Justin Herbert. In a, in a standard, like, 12-team league, would you take him or would you just bet on those two uh, those two quarterbacks? Because there are not a lot of guys going right now in round 18 that, that I like that are still on the board. It makes sense based on your build. I don't think your team needs him with Daniels and Herbert there. Like, I think those are two solid quarterbacks I feel really good about. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, uh, I felt the same way, but I didn't know if you were like, dude, just take him, get the stack, move on. But there is another player who correlates with my first round pick in an offense that I love. I'm going to take Khalif Raymond in <laughs> round 18. Oh, gosh. Who Kyle will give me such a hard time for. But... I think is good. I mean, 
he's not going to run a ton of routes, obviously. That's the issue. But Khalif's yards route run last year were good. He was really good in ESPN's open score. If JMO isn't awesome, I mean, there's a path to snaps. If Amon Ra misses time, I mean, if he misses time, this team's done. But if he misses time, he can fill in for a week. So give me a single in round 18. I'm not going for a home run here with Khalif. I don't even know if you're going to get to the plate. It, it's going to really Raymond. hurt for you, Kyle, when we're in like week nine and Cleve Raymond is $3,300 on DraftKings and we're talking about him as cash play. It's going to hurt. The only time you can talk about Cleve Raymond, which shout out, he's a Georgia boy, Greater Atlanta Christian School, um, is Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving slate, you could talk about Cleve Raymond and have some fun with it. Fine. Um, we, we just finished the draft. So let's go through the board. I know the people listening really want to know. So we'll post the draft board. The people that were in it our Discord members, thank you for being a part of this. Let's quickly go through a couple of teams that we like, like the way that they built. It makes sense. The stacking makes sense. Like this first team, KYL3 Borg. What a great team and the way that they thought it out. I mean, just such a nuanced approach, such thoughtful, I mean, such grace. I mean, Your what team a is team. terrible. I feel fine about my <laughs> team. I don't love... I don't love some of my wide receivers. Like I, I wanted to get a, a, some of the more powerhouses, but that's what you get taking Bijan first and then kind of playing a little bit of catch up. Um, so going through some of the rosters here, Black Shirts was able to do the Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson stack at the 4-5, which feels really, really great. They also have Tyreek, Devontae Adams, Jordan Addison, JSN. I think the overall structure of that team through the first 10 rounds makes a ton of sense. They also got Tua. So their high-end stacks of the Dolphins and the Ravens are two teams that we want to bet on. We think we're going to be good. They have the win totals. That's a team that stands out to me. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty solid team as well. Also, a shout out um, Sam White. His team looks very solid. And it's probably because that's just how I like to draft where wide receivers early and often. You know, CeeDee Lamb, Mike Evans, CJ Moore, George Pickens, Amari Cooper, like came out of the gate on fire and then fill it in with the running backs that I like that go in that kind of zero RB range. Javante Williams, I know he's fallen quite a bit. Chase Brown, fine with that ambiguous backfield. Ty Chandler, I talked about. He's got your boy Gibson and then has a very, very solid value stack in Baker Mayfield who went in uh, a pick 194 in this draft. So basically 30 spots after ADP and paired him up with Mike Evans. So I think it's a very, very solid build. Yeah, one of the ways that you can look at your team's is just compare them to the win totals market. I mean, it's a fairly efficient market. I mean, it's not going to be totally right, but when a team is projected for 10 wins, it's kind of a big deal. And I look at a team like, uh, who is it? Bam Bam Queen has, they want the Bengals and they want the Lions. And they're kind of condensed around those teams saying they're going to be top five offenses. And that makes a ton of sense if you wanted to go there. Um, There's some other spots on the board that, have a lot of the same position early. So there is some stacking stuff where a team took Brees Hall, Saquon, and Pacheco with three of their first four picks. And then they kind of had to make up wide receiver a lot with getting some Green Bay options. So they took Watson and Dobbs to pair with Jordan Love. But then they felt kind of behind the eight ball taking some other wide receivers late. So that's the reason why you build that way and why you were talking about that earlier is you start to get to round seven, eight, nine. You're like, I have to take a wide receiver here and they're all gone. It's like, you're taking Curtis Samuel as your wide receiver four in a knife fight. And Curtis, he's dirty. <laughs> dirty Curtis <laughs> will do it, but it's not really how we like to build our teams. Yeah. That's the, that's the, tr- the tricky part is like, it kind of does feel like sometimes you want to zig while everyone else is zag zagging in these rooms. But if you get behind at wide receiver, like you really cannot make it up. I mean, you have to hit on late round guys and the hit rate in that range compared to the running backs when you're talking about wide receivers versus running backs is just quite quite poor so it stinks that we're paying a tax on all these wide receivers because of the the draft rooms that we're in but i think it's just right and the, the data has shown it's right and it's not a spot where i'm getting different because when i do go rb rb to start or i take a wide receiver then two running backs or something like that which i'll, I'll play around with those builds i just hate my team almost every time yep yeah. all right let's quickly do this with each other bets you tell me your favorite pick of mine and then your least favorite pick, and I will do the same for yours. Um, because there's one spot in the draft where I wish I could have like swapped out two players. 
Um, but that's in hindsight analysis. But yeah, give me your favorite pick of mine and then your least favorite. Roast me. <sighs> Dude, what an absolutely great pick of Jalen Waddle. Um, I- I'm super high on him this year. I think he's my top exposure wide receiver currently, if not if not the top, one of the top three. Um, contingent upside through the roof if Tyreek goes down, obviously, but just a talented player. He's in his prime. It's a good offense. Just makes a ton of sense. So I love that pick. As far as a pick I wasn't in love with, I mean, honestly, dude, there's like not that many holes I can poke in your team, which which kind of stinks. One thing I'll throw out to you, though, are, where are you out on Dante Foreman? Because like in round 18, I, it's fine. I, I've taken him a couple times too. But part of me is like, I don't think I've read anything or heard a single thing about him this offseason, which sometimes with those players that are on their, what, fifth team in four right. years or something like that, I don't even truthfully know what it is. Like sometimes that is like, this feels so bad and I can see where this goes south. So if there was like one guy that I'm not like psyched to have on my team, it's it's Foreman, but I get it. You're betting on the Browns. He's round 18. It's it's lower opportunity cost. But where have you heard anything on him in, in offseason? Not really. I think it was more of just be betting on the Browns. I don't think Pierre Strong has gotten a ton of buzz either. So that's where it's kind of like, is it Strong? Is it Ford? Is it Foreman? I don't know. And it could end up being a dead spot on this roster, to be honest. But uh, we know he's good for at least two games a year. True that. That's that's kind of like in his contract. I didn't love my DeAndre Hopkins pick. It doesn't feel good when you compare to other higher upside wide receivers. Like you took Brian Thomas, the pick before me, and then I took Zach Moss. So DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Moss back-to-back feels gross uh, when I look at my roster. With yours, I got to say, we've talked about James Cook a lot on the podcast. I like him as a running back you can take in round five, and I'm completely fine in zero RB builds if he's your first running back. So I like the James Cook pick a lot. I love Jaden Daniels. I've taken him a bunch of places where you can get a backdoor stack. I wish I wish you would have taken Jahan Dotson. You took him in front um, of me, dude. You literally sniped me. N- I would have take I would have been fine taking him where you took Justin Herbert. Yeah, that's probably where I should have, but you were just a terrible friend and decided to take him. No, and, and what's funny is that I was like, I'm going to take Josh Downs here to troll bets. Oh, look, I could take Jahan Dotson here to also troll bets. Uh, I so, mean, dude, your team is all about the routes. Jahan, K. Dotton, just running around out there, not doing anything. That's <laughs> Those are your boys. It, it feels pretty good. And we know the most important thing is to make sure you look at the projections. <laughs> those are everything. Oh, so for I'm sure. My- when you when you sort by projected points in your 12-man league, you just take it to the bank. You already know. Yeah, so my team exposure, I have three Colts, I have three Browns, two Falcons, what's new, uh, two Dolphins, uh, two Bengals, and then, you know, I, I think overall I feel good about the teams that I went in on. That was my pushback when you talked about the, the Patriots, like, do you really need to go in on this team? Not necessarily, but Pop Douglas kind of fit as like a wide receiver seven, and it was like, that's fine. I don't really feel great or, you know, excited about it, but he makes sense. Yep. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you for getting to participate with us. Bets, tell everybody bye. Yes, fun episode. Sadly, Kyle took Jahan Dotson and I'll probably lose, but that's fine. Uh, good episode. We'll be back next week with more Best Ball Talk. And we'll post this on socials and in Discord for you to check out. Easier to follow along with the draft board. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers DFS and Betting Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at thefantasyfootballers.com.